faint glimmer of light down an alleyway. Curiosity mingled with desperation as Eddie hurried towards it, his footsteps echoing in the quiet streets. The rain fell steadily now, casting shimmering reflections on the slick P at the end. Eddie pushed open the heavy door, relief washing over him as he stepped into a cozy interior filled with the comforting aroma of brewed coffee and the faint murmur of conversation. The bar was modest but inviting, with mismatched tables and a handful of patrons scattered. A middle-aged woman with a kind smile greeted him from behind the counter. Welcome, stranger. Looking for shelter from the storm? Ed. The woman poured him a steaming mug of coffee, which he accepted with thanks. As he sipped the hot liquid, warmth spread through his chilled body. He glanced around, noticing the eclectic decor old photographs on the walls, shelves filled with books and trinkets that gave the place a lived-in feel. First time on Nerva? The woman asked, conversational. Eddie nodded again. Just got here. Not exactly how I plan, she chuckled softly. Nerva has a way of surprising newcomers. It's not the friendliest place, but it's got its charms if you know where Eddie leaned in, intrigued despite himself. Any chance you know where I might find work? Or the woman regarded him thoughtfully. Depends on what you're willing to do. There's always odd jobs for those who aren't afraid of a little risk. As they spoke, Eddie felt a flicker of hope ignite within him. Maybe this unexpected detour wasn't a disaster after all. Maybe, just maybe, Nerva held the opportunity outside. The rain continued to drum against the windows. But inside the starlit haven, Eddie found a momentary refuge, a glimmer of light in the darken. The patrons, previously engaged in their own brooding thoughts or hushed conversations, slowly turned to look at him with a mix of curiosity and suspicion. Eddie hesitated the rosin halfway to the bow, unsure of whether to continue or retreat into the shadows of anonymity. The barman, wiping a glass with unnecessary vigor, shot him a glare that could chill molten steel. You playing for us, stranger? Eddie swallowed, feeling the weight of every eye in the room on him. Uh, just tuning up, he replied, trying to sound casual despite the nervous flutter in his stomach. A gruff voice from the corner spoke up, breaking the tense silence. Play us something then. Let's see what you got. Eddie's fingers tightened around the neck of his fiddle. He hadn't performed for an audience in a long time, and certainly not under these circumstances. But something in the challenge sparked a defiance within him. With a nod to himself, he drew the bow across the strings, coaxing out a haunting melody that filled the smoky air of the bar. The notes danced between shadows and light, carrying with them echoes of distant places and forgotten dreams. As he played, the atmosphere in the room shifted. The patrons gradually relaxed, their expressions softening as the music wove its spell around them. The barman paused in his polishing to listen, a hint of grudging approval in his eyes. Eddie closed his eyes, letting the music flow freely from his soul. For those few moments, he wasn't just a stranded sailor or a desperate traveler. He was a storyteller, weaving tales of adventure and heartache, of far-off lands and lost loves. When he finally lowered the bow, the silence that followed was different. It was no longer wary or hostile, but contemplative, as if the music had stirred something long buried in each listener's heart. Slowly, a smattering of applause broke out, tentative at first, then growing stronger as the spell of the music lingered in the air. Eddie opened his eyes to see faces softened by emotion, some smiling, some lost in thought. The gruff voice from the corner spoke again, softer this time. Not bad, sailor. Not bad at all. Eddie smiled, a genuine warmth spreading through him. In that dingy bar on a rain-soaked Xeno planet, he had found a moment of connection, a fleeting glimpse of camaraderie amidst the loneliness. As the night wore on, Eddie played a few more tunes, each one drawing the patrons closer together, binding them in shared memories and unspoken understanding. And in that unlikely haven, beneath the dim glow of flickering lights, Eddie realized that sometimes, amidst the darkest storms, the brightest moments of humanity can still shine through. The barman's earlier jest about Eddie being a priest now felt like a distant echo, lost in the quiet murmurs that replaced the initial anticipation. He glanced around, meeting the eyes of the patrons who had moments ago been so captivated by his playing. Their expressions ranged from mild interest to mild irritation, as if he had interrupted something important with his mediocre performance. Feeling the weight of their collective disinterest, Eddie took a deep breath and decided to try a different approach. 
Maybe something more upbeat would lighten the mood and win back their attention. He launched into a lively reel, fingers dancing across the strings with renewed vigor. The tune was infectious, filled with energy and a hint of defiance. Eddie could see some heads nodding in time with the music, a few feet tapping against the creaky floorboards. But still, there was no applause, no cheers of encouragement. Just that same subdued atmosphere, thick with unspoken judgments and unmet expectations. As he neared the end of the reel, Eddie realized that perhaps music couldn't bridge the gap here tonight. These people weren't looking for entertainment. They were looking for something deeper, something that his fiddle alone couldn't provide. With a final flourish, he brought the piece to a close and lowered his bow, setting it gently beside him on the bar. The silence that followed was heavy with unspoken words and unfulfilled hopes. The barman, his expression unreadable behind his gruff demeanor, nodded slightly as if to acknowledge Eddie's effort. Thanks, sailor, he muttered, pouring himself a drink and returning to his duties. Eddie nodded in return, accepting the subtle dismissal. He knew when the room had spoken its piece, even if the words were not voiced aloud. With a sigh, he reached for his own glass, suddenly feeling the weight of exhaustion settling in his bones. Outside, the rain continued to fall, a steady rhythm that seemed to echo the somber mood within. Eddie leaned back against the bar, lost in his thoughts, wondering where he would go from here. In the dim light of the starlit haven, amidst the disappointed faces and the lingering echoes of music, Eddie realized that sometimes even the most heartfelt tunes can't mend what's broken or heal what's been lost. And perhaps, tonight, all he could offer was a fleeting distraction in a world weighed down by its own troubles. Eddie retired to his room upstairs, the weight of exhaustion and a mild buzz from the whiskey settling in his bones. The barman's words lingered in his mind two prayers. It seemed he had unwittingly taken on a role that extended beyond music and into the hearts of the patrons of the Starlit Haven. As he lay on the creaky bed, staring up at the cracked ceiling, Eddie replayed the evening's events in his mind. The faces of the audience, initially skeptical and guarded, gradually softened as he played. He recalled the moments when a foot tapped involuntarily to the rhythm, or when a hardened expression softened with the strains of a familiar tune. I'm here to make contacts, Eddie murmured to himself, as if reaffirming his purpose. The life of a sailor was unpredictable, filled with fleeting connections and sudden departures. But here, on Nerva, perhaps he could lay the groundwork for something more stable. The whiskey-induced haze blurred the edges of his thoughts, mingling memories of other ports, other bars, where similar scenes had played out in different shades of light and shadow. Eddie had always been adept at reading people, at finding the pulse of a room and adapting his music to match its rhythm. Tomorrow, he mused, he would explore Nerva by daylight, find a meal, as he had joked, but also seek out opportunities. He needed to replenish his dwindling credits, secure a place to stay for longer than a night, and perhaps uncover the secrets this planet held beneath its harsh exterior. As sleep finally crept upon him, Eddie allowed himself a rare moment of optimism. The strange gesture of currency, placed before him by the barman and then mirrored by the patrons, spoke of a tentative acceptance, a thread of trust woven in the fabric of a single evening's performance. Morning would bring clarity, he hoped a chance to prove himself beyond the role of a passing musician, and maybe, just maybe, find a foothold in this unfamiliar corner of the galaxy. With that thought, Eddie drifted into a restless sleep, dreams colored by the haunting melodies of his fiddle and the uncertain promises of tomorrow. Morning, the barman greeted him gruffly, setting down a steaming mug of coffee without Eddie needing to ask. You played well last night. Eddie accepted the coffee gratefully, the warmth seeping into his cold hands. Thanks, he replied, taking a tentative sip. It was strong and bitter, just how he liked it. Any chance you could tell me where I am? The barman raised an eyebrow, a hint of amusement in his eyes. Nerva, he said simply. Not the friendliest place, as you've probably gathered, but it has its moments. Nerva. Eddie repeated the name silently, committing it to memory. Any work around here for a sailor down on his luck? he asked, trying to sound casual despite the urgency in his tone. The barman considered him for a moment as if weighing his options. Maybe, he finally said, his voice low. Depends on what you're willing to do. There's always a need for someone who can handle themselves. Eddie nodded, sensing an opportunity. I'm handy with a fiddle and not bad with my fists if it comes to that, 
he offered, hoping to appeal to whatever needs the barman might have. The barman grunted noncommittally, wiping down the counter with a ragged cloth. Stick around, I'll see what I can find out, he said cryptically, as if there were more unsaid than spoken. As Eddie finished his coffee, he felt a flicker of hope amidst the lingering uncertainty. Perhaps Nerva held more than just fleeting promises and last-minute gigs. Maybe, just maybe, it held a chance for him to build something more lasting a foothold in a universe that had a habit of tossing sailors like him from one port to the next. With renewed determination, Eddie set down the empty mug and squared his shoulders. Whatever Nerva had in store for him, he was ready to face it head on. End to his many speculations about where he was now and what it had to offer. The taxi driver dropped him off in the bustling heart of Ain, a maze of narrow streets lined with shops, eateries, and the occasional neon sign flickering in the daylight. Eddie thanked the driver and stepped out onto the pavement, feeling a surge of energy as he took in the sights and sounds of the city. People hurried past, their conversations a blend of alien languages and familiar tones. The air smelled of spices and fried food, a stark contrast to the musty atmosphere of the starlit haven. First things first, Eddie thought, scanning the street for a likely place to grab a meal. A small cafe with a sign advertising local delicacies caught his eye and he headed inside, eager to satisfy his rumbling stomach. Over a hearty breakfast of savory stew and crusty bread, Eddie mulled over his next steps. He needed to find ship company offices to inquire about work, but first he had to gather some basic information about Ayen and its opportunities. After finishing his meal, he approached the cafe owner, a friendly woman with silver streaks in her hair. Excuse me, Eddie began. Could you point me in the direction of the nearest ship company offices? The woman smiled warmly, wiping her hands on her apron. Of course, dear. Head two blocks down this street, take a left, and you'll see a building with a large sign for galactic transports. Can't miss it. Thank you, Eddie replied gratefully, tossing a few coins onto the table as payment. And one more thing, he added, leaning in conspiratorially. Any advice for a newcomer looking to make a good impression? The woman chuckled, her eyes twinkling with amusement. Be honest, be reliable, and don't be afraid to show a bit of spirit. Ain't appreciates hard workers with a bit of fire in their belly. With a nod of thanks, Eddie left the cafe, feeling more confident than he had in days. Armed with directions and a newfound sense of purpose, he made his way through the bustling streets towards galactic transports. As he walked, Eddie couldn't help but think that maybe, just maybe, Nerva and Ain held more than just transient opportunities. Perhaps, in this corner of the galaxy, he could finally find a place to call his own a port, not just for ships, but for dreams and ambitions, too. Eddie's face lit up with immediate satisfaction. That settled his playlist for the night. His communicator had started updating, filling in the gaps as it scanned local sites. The reason he hadn't found any hotels or venues became clear. There simply weren't any. Here, what passed for music was held in churches, and accommodations listed as hotels were more akin to brothels with bars. Navigating the cultural nuances of this xenoplanet was proving challenging. Eddie couldn't reliably discern the genders of the local species, which meant he might have unwittingly walked among hosts who were entirely different from what he assumed. He chuckled wryly at the thought of possibly being surrounded by locals whose professions or roles he hadn't fully grasped. His explorations led him to a restaurant that offered human food, a welcome find that quelled his curiosity about anything else for the moment. Eddie flagged down the taxi driver and pointed out the eatery. The driver's sharp intake of breath signaled his surprise. Friend, that place is pricey, the driver cautioned. My broodling runs a joint much cheaper and closer, Eddie nodded, mentally noting to check out the driver's recommendation next time. I should find out if there are any other humans on this planet. He mused aloud, realizing the isolation he felt might be alleviated by familiar faces and shared experiences. He dug into his pocket and pulled out a wad of the local currency he had received. Will this cover it? He asked the driver. The driver snorted with amusement. Yes, that will do just fine. Enjoy your meal and welcome to Ain. With that reassurance, Eddie entered the restaurant, his thoughts already turning to the possibilities this new world held and the challenges he would need to navigate to make it his own. Eddie chuckled at the taxi driver's remark. Probably for a few weeks, huh? I'll keep that in mind, he replied with a grin, already contemplating the possibilities and challenges that lay ahead on Nerva. 
The restaurant was pleasantly clean, with booths lining the walls. Eddie estimated it could comfortably seat around a hundred people at most. In the center of the room stood an unusual instrument that caught his attention, a hybrid of a piano and a church organ, currently being played somewhat clumsily by a local patron. The dissonant notes filled the air, ignored by the other diners as they carried on with their conversations. A server approached Eddie and guided him to a smaller booth. Sir, I will fetch the human menu. Can I get you something to drink? We have human beers if you wish, the server offered politely. Eddie leaned back, relaxing into the booth. Do you have coffee? I could seriously use a coffee, he replied with a grateful smile. The prospect of a hot, strong brew was enticing after the night he'd had. The server nodded. Of course, sir, I'll bring that right over, he said before disappearing towards the kitchen. When the server returned, Eddie eagerly perused the human menu. It offered familiar comfort food options, burgers and fries, deep fried poultry with fries or just fries. Perfect hangover fare he thought, nodding to himself as he made his choice. As the server set down his coffee, Eddie couldn't resist asking the crucial question that had been on his mind since arriving on Nerva. Are there any other humans on this planet? He inquired, hoping for a glimmer of familiarity in this alien world. Majestic in their architecture, while others were ramshackle and seemingly held together by sheer willpower and layers of paint. The streets bustled with a mix of species, each going about their business with a sense of purpose that Eddie found both intriguing and daunting. After finishing his meal, Eddie paid the bill and left a generous tip for the server who had been so helpful. He ventured out into the city, his mind buzzing with thoughts of the message he had sent to the human contact and the prospects of finding work on Nerva. As he walked, Eddie couldn't shake the feeling of being an outsider in this vibrant but enigmatic place. He passed by shops selling exotic goods, glimpsed into alleys where vendors hawked strange fruits and artifacts, and found himself drawn to a bustling marketplace where traders bartered loudly in a mishmash of languages. The contrast between the polished and the ramshackle, the bustling market and the quiet alleys, painted a picture of Nerva that was both diverse and unpredictable. Eddie realized that to navigate this world successfully, he would need more than just luck. He would need to understand its rhythms, its secrets, and perhaps even its contradictions. As the day wore on, Eddie's wanderings led him back towards the starlit haven. He pushed open the familiar doors, greeted by the dim light and the subdued hum of voices. The barman glanced up from polishing a glass, a faint recognition in his eyes. Back so soon, priest? The barman remarked with a gruff tone that held a hint of amusement. Eddie grinned. Back for another round of prayers, he replied, his voice laced with determination, and maybe a bit more than that. With that, Eddie settled onto a stool at the bar, ready to face whatever Nerva had in store for him next. The stark contrast between the buildings puzzled Eddie as he wandered through the city. Some were polished and majestic, showcasing intricate architecture that hinted at a prosperous past. Others, mere steps away, resembled slums haphazardly constructed and worn down, yet oddly situated side by side. Deciding he had seen enough for the moment, Eddie called for his taxi to return. A nap seemed like a good idea before the evening's gig. Just as he settled into his room, there came a quiet knock at the door. Opening it, he found the barman standing there expectantly. Ah, I was hoping you'd come down. The barman began, his tone carrying a hint of urgency. There's quite a crowd that's heard about you. Eddie shrugged nonchalantly. Sure, give me ten minutes, he replied, closing the door behind him. Descending the stairs, he initially heard only muted sounds from the bar room. However, as he entered, he was greeted by a scene that surprised him. The room was packed with Xenos, tightly clustered around the bar. All the tables had been removed to make space, leaving only the elaborate chair that now awaited him at the bar. A bottle of whiskey and a glass had been placed there, yet no one else seemed to be drinking. The barman looked visibly relieved as Eddie approached. Welcome back, friend, he greeted warmly. I found some human beer if you prefer it. Eddie nodded, a mixture of curiosity and anticipation swirling within him. This unexpected turn of events hinted that his music had made an impact here on Nerva perhaps more than he had initially imagined. As he settled into the chair, he couldn't help but wonder what the night had in store for him. The barman nodded understandingly. You would prefer, but that's our best whiskey, he admitted. He poured Eddie a stout beer instead, indicating it was their choice for humans. Eddie took a sip. 
finding the stout satisfyingly rich. He settled into the moment, taking a minute to tune his fiddle before launching into his set. Despite the peculiarities of the pub, Eddie was in his element. He had performed in plenty of pubs before, and this one, with its eclectic mix of patrons, was simply a new challenge. Starting with Farewell to Aaron, he moved smoothly through tunes he had played the previous night, building the atmosphere in the room. As he transitioned into the exile of Aaron, he noticed a shift. A few of the Xenos began to drink, mirroring his energy and turning the gathering into something resembling a proper session. An hour flew by in a whirl of music and camaraderie. Eddie finally signaled for a break, waving over the barman. Friend, I'm going to take a small break and another beer, he announced. I need to freshen up. If anyone asks, tell them my throat and fingers need a break. The eyes of the patrons followed him as he made his way back to his room. Eddie felt a rush of satisfaction. This was more than just a gig. It was a connection forged through music in a place far from home. As he closed the door behind him, he couldn't help but wonder what the rest of the night had in store, with a nod of understanding. Sure, I can play those for you, Eddie replied, feeling a surge of curiosity about the dark woman who seemed to know his music. He settled into his stool, adjusting the fiddle strings with practiced ease while the room waited in anticipation. As he began to play Farewell to Aaron, the atmosphere shifted once more. The audience seemed more engaged, their attention focused on the music weaving through the room. Finishing the tune, Eddie glanced at the woman. How about the exile of Aaron next, he suggested, eager to see her reaction. The woman smiled knowingly. Yes, please, she replied softly, her eyes holding a hint of intrigue. Eddie launched into the tune, letting the melody fill the space between them. The woman listened intently, her expression thoughtful. As the last notes faded away, Eddie couldn't help but ask, so what brings you here tonight? The woman set down her glass, her gaze meeting his. I heard there was a priest playing music, she explained cryptically. I wanted to see for myself. Eddie chuckled, realizing the misunderstanding. Ah, uh, well, I'm not exactly a priest, he admitted with a grin. Just a musician passing through, but I'm glad you came. The woman nodded, her eyes twinkling. Your music is different she remarked softly. It speaks to something deeper. Eddie nodded in appreciation. Music has a way of connecting us no matter where we come from, he mused. I'm just glad to share it. As they continued to talk, Eddie felt a sense of camaraderie with the woman, bridging the gap between their worlds through the universal language of music. He couldn't wait to see where the night would lead next. With the mellow voice beside him harmonizing flawlessly, Eddie continued to play each note resonating perfectly in the crowded bar. As he moved on to other songs, the woman named Aaron sat beside him, her fingers tapping to the rhythm with evident enjoyment. She perked up particularly when he played Aaron Go Brog and Aaron Star, her presence adding an extra layer of warmth to the atmosphere. They filled another hour with music before Eddie decided to take a break, noticing the crowd was in good spirits. That was amazing, you have a fantastic voice. Eddie complimented Aaron, genuinely impressed by her musicality. Can I ask your name? She laughed softly. Oh, I'm called Aaron. That's why I loved your songs, she explained. It's so rare to find my name in something as beautiful as those tunes. I just had to come and see who had arrived. Eddie was taken aback, but intrigued. Well, trust me, that name is very popular back home. I'm sure I could find another hundred or so more, if you don't mind the spelling. Were you named after the city? Unbeknownst to Eddie, the barman's expression turned pale, and the crowd instinctively moved back, creating more space than before. Aaron continued to gaze at Eddie, her eyes wide with curiosity and a hint of something else that Eddie couldn't quite place. His voice was strained and his fingers tired, but it had been an exhilarating session. Aaron had insisted on singing Aaron Star again, eager to join in with newfound confidence. Her eyes swept the room, and Eddie could sense the audience's enthusiasm to hear the song once more. Only after promising to return the next night did Aaron finally relent and let Eddie rest. Exhausted, Eddie waved over the barman and signaled that the performance was over for the night. As he looked at the barman, he noticed a difference this one seemed younger and more fit, perhaps a son taking over. The crowd, too, appeared younger, possibly joining their parents for the music. His thoughts, however, were primarily on the intriguing woman named Aaron, who had expressed interest in meeting him again tomorrow. This planet is picking up nicely, Eddie mused to himself. 
Quietly, the barman placed two large piles of cash in front of him, a gesture that left Eddie momentarily speechless. I never thought I would see that, the barman said with sincerity. Thank you. With that, Eddie's room for the night was ready, a different one from before. As he retired to his room, he couldn't help but wonder what the next night would bring, both musically and personally, on this surprising planet of Nerva. The place was a full suite, unexpectedly luxurious, especially with the full bath that Eddie thoroughly enjoyed. Despite his fatigue, he couldn't sleep, still buzzing from the adrenaline of the gig. He spent an hour soaking in the bath, sipping on the waiting whiskey. Someone had even cleaned his clothes and neatly packed away his gear, a thoughtful gesture that Eddie appreciated. Finally, he sprawled out on the bed and drifted into sleep, dreaming of the dark-haired girl with the soft voice who had captivated him during the quiet night. Meanwhile, in the morning, Irin, the new barman, gently tapped on his door. Sir, you said to call you for lunch. The taxi is waiting, Irin informed him, reminding Eddie of his plans. Eddie had momentarily forgotten about lunch, his thoughts returning to the events of the previous night, particularly Aaron. His mind raced with thoughts of her as he grabbed his jacket and hurried out the door. Outside, he noticed the lights were off in the suite, but the windows glowed brightly. It struck him that the room seemed larger than he remembered, but he dismissed the thought, focusing on catching the waiting cab. This time, however, his driver seemed less inclined to chat or offer information compared to their previous conversations. Interrupted Phil, excuse me, but can I join you? Eddie turned to see Aaron standing there with a warm smile. Of course, Eddie replied, gesturing to the empty seat opposite him. Phil glanced at Aaron with a mix of surprise and apprehension before nodding slightly and excusing himself. Hi again, Aaron greeted Eddie as she settled into the seat. I hope you don't mind me joining you. Phil mentioned you work with the TTTA? Eddie nodded, slightly taken aback but intrigued. Yes, I'm Eddie. It's nice to meet you again, Aaron. Phil mentioned there aren't many humans here. Aaron chuckled softly. That's an understatement. It's just us at the moment. How are you finding Nerva so far? Eddie smiled, appreciating Aaron's straightforwardness. It's different, but in a good way. The music scene here seems quite unique. Aaron's eyes sparkled with amusement. Oh, yes, the music is a big deal here. It's tied to almost everything. We're quite protective of it. Eddie nodded thoughtfully, recalling the previous night's session at the bar. I gathered that. What about you? Are you involved in music, too? Aaron's smile widened. In a way, I have an appreciation for it, let's say. And hearing you play last night was a pleasant surprise. Before Eddie could respond, Phil returned with a serious expression. Aaron, we need to go. Now. Aaron frowned, casting a quick glance at Eddie. I'll explain later, she promised before standing up. Nice meeting you again, Eddie. Take care. As Aaron and Phil hurried out of the restaurant, Eddie couldn't shake the feeling that there was much more to Aaron and her world on Nerva than met the eye. Seemed Aaron was more than just a regular local. He decided to roll with it, accepting Aaron's casual demeanor and her revelation about possibly being an AI avatar or something similar. I'll have the deep fried poultry with fries. Eddie replied, trying to maintain the conversation despite his swirling thoughts. So, Aaron, if the city is named after you, does that mean you've been around here a long time? Aaron chuckled softly. In a sense, yes, I've been here for quite a while, seeing how things unfold. It's an interesting place, Nerva. Eddie nodded, taking a sip of water to collect his thoughts. I can tell it's unlike any other planet I've been to. The music, the culture, it's all so intertwined. Aaron's expression softened. Music is our way of connecting with the universe with each other. It's sacred in a way. Yeah, I noticed last night, Eddie agreed, recalling the intense session at the bar. People here take their music seriously. That they do, Aaron affirmed with a smile. But enough about Nerva. What about you, Eddie? What brings you to our humble planet? Eddie hesitated for a moment, unsure how much to reveal. I was on a ship, but things didn't work out. Now I'm looking for work exploring opportunities. Aaron nodded knowingly. A common tale among travelers. Well, you might find something of interest here. We have a few projects that could use someone with your skills. Eddie raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Really, like what? Aaron leaned in slightly, her tone lowering. Let's just say Nerva is a place of possibilities. We're always looking for capable hands. Before Eddie could inquire further, their food arrived, served by a Zeno waiter who seemed to be observing them curiously. They continued their meal, exchanging stories and jokes, Eddie feeling more at ease with Aaron's company. As they finished, Aaron glanced at her comms device. Well, Eddie, I have to run. 
There's some preparation I need to attend to for tonight's concert. Concert? Eddie asked, intrigued. Aaron nodded, a glint of excitement in her eyes. Yes, a special event. You should come. It's at the Temple of Harmony. I think you'd find it enlightening. Eddie nodded, suddenly curious about what this concert might entail. I'll be there. With a nod of farewell, Aaron left, leaving Eddie to ponder the strange and fascinating world of Nerva, where music and mysteries seemed to blend seamlessly together. As Eddie wandered around the transformed theater, he marveled at the intricate designs and the grandeur of the setting. The once dingy bar was now a polished venue with ornate decorations and a sense of reverence in the air. The barman's earlier warning about disappointing Aaron echoed in his mind. He chuckled to himself, realizing the unusual dynamic he found himself in a human musician sought after by an entity revered as a goddess by the locals. Taking a deep breath to calm his nerves, Eddie tuned his fiddle, preparing for the evening ahead. He decided to play his heart out, knowing that Aaron's appreciation for music could elevate his performance beyond the usual. As the time approached, the audience started to fill the seats, a mix of Xenos and a few humans like himself. Eddie spotted Aaron at the back of the room, her presence commanding attention even without saying a word. When he took the stage, there was a hush in the audience, a palpable anticipation for what was to come. Eddie began with a slow, haunting melody, setting the mood for the evening. He played with passion and skill, drawing from his experiences and the emotions of the moment. As the night progressed, Eddie felt a connection with the audience unlike anything he had experienced before. They responded warmly to his music, their cheers and applause encouraging him to push further, to explore new rhythms and melodies. At one point, Eddie glanced back at Aaron, who was watching him intently. He couldn't help but smile, feeling a sense of validation in her approval. She had orchestrated this evening, perhaps for her own reasons, but Eddie appreciated the opportunity to share his music with an audience that appreciated it so deeply. By the end of the concert, Eddie was exhausted but elated. The audience gave him a standing ovation, their cheers echoing through the grand hall. He bowed gratefully, acknowledging their appreciation before stepping off the stage. Aaron approached him backstage, her expression warm and appreciative. That was incredible, Eddie, she said sincerely. You have a gift. Eddie grinned, feeling a sense of accomplishment. Thank you, Aaron. I'm glad you enjoyed it. She nodded, her eyes twinkling with amusement. I did more than enjoy it. You brought something special to Nerva tonight. As they walked out of the theater together, Eddie felt a sense of camaraderie with Aaron, despite the strangeness of their circumstances. He knew he had found more than just a gig on Nerva. He had found a connection, a bridge between worlds through music. As they parted ways for the night, Eddie couldn't help but look forward to what other surprises Nerva had in store for him. The journey was far from over, and he was eager to see where his music would take him next on this fascinating planet. As they waited for the crowd to settle in, Eddie and Aaron sat at the bar, exchanging banter and enjoying the anticipation of the evening ahead. Aaron, who had crafted her fiddle carefully and practiced in the afternoon, seemed to be genuinely having fun, a rare occurrence for her. After a moment of quiet, Eddie leaned over and asked, So, Aaron, have you ever traveled in space? I mean, as an AI or something similar, I've heard stories of AIs settling down, building cities, even raising their own people. Sounds fascinating. Aaron sighed softly and finished her beer before responding, Eddie, I'm not exactly an avatar. I am the planet, the entire planet itself. I've been here for several billion years. When the first aliens, the Xenos, arrived, I interacted with them, helped them settle in. I enjoy observing travelers like you, always exploring and seeking new experiences. But once they realized I was aware of them, things got complicated. Eddie nodded thoughtfully, absorbing Aaron's revelation. He couldn't fathom what it would be like to be a sentient planet, aware of the comings and goings of civilizations over millennia. This must be quite different for you then, having a concert like this, he remarked trying to lighten the mood. Aaron chuckled softly, a sound that echoed through the bar. Indeed, this is probably the most fun I've had in ages, at least since the last Ice Age, she quipped, a hint of playfulness in her voice. She glanced at Eddie with a twinkle in her eye. Now, can you check my fiddle again? Are you sure it's okay? Eddie picked up the fiddle, running his fingers over its smooth surface. It's beautiful, just like its creator, he replied warmly, a genuine smile on his face. And yes, it's ready. Let's give them a night they won't forget.
They both nodded in silent agreement, the anticipation building as they prepared to take the stage. Eddie counted off quietly. One, two, three. And with that, they launched into the evening's performance, their music filling the hall and captivating the audience, both Zenos and humans alike. For Eddie, this was more than just another gig on a distant planet. It was a unique experience, sharing music with a being as ancient and enigmatic as the planet itself. As they played on into the night, Eddie couldn't help but feel a deep sense of gratitude for the unexpected connections and adventures that music had brought into his life.